Now, how long had you been doing drag before you ended up auditioning for Drag Race? Um, I literally first auditioned for Drag Race the year I started drag. That's how, not once say I thought I was ready, I just wanted to be out of Wisconsin. So like by any means necessary, I was going to get out. <laughs> oh, when baby, when I finally got on that thing, I look back at my audition tapes like, babe, you were lying. <laughs> Wait, You're what were you lying, lying about? You don't dance. Are you fooling? I fully was like, girl, I'm a performance artist. I perform all the time. I'm a dancing queen. I'll give you everything. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> but I interviewed really well. That's why I always had a job. I just never kept them. Drag Race was no well, exception. Well, speaking <laughs> of Drag Race, I mean, eventually you get on the show. And one thing that I have heard from so many people is you had RuPaul saying it, you had Michelle saying it, you had um, Alexis Michelle saying it, is that your um, audition video was like the funniest thing ever. What, what was in this audition video? Oh man, it's incredible to think of. I like the idea that people think it's so funny because it was nothing for me when I was doing it. I was just talking and like, it's really like my low, low budget, you know, production that was making it all happen. I like did the sissy that walk acting scene with a puppet. Like we're going back and forth fighting, like it's Valley of the Dolls. Um, I was performing outside in public, which I found out everybody does. I guess I was just more outrageous than others, but it also puts you in that weird situation where like people have built up this audition tape now where I can never release it. It's like that painting in Mrs. Maisel where like they built it up, but they can never show it now because it's never going to live up to the expectation. Well, that, that was the next question I was going to ask you because everybody's like, is he ever going to release it or react to it? And I guess that question is no, you know what you should do? You should make a video. I don't even have it anymore. I deleted it. You deleted this video that everybody is talking about. Yeah, it's gone forever. Poof. Oh my gosh, James. Just like that. Had, you could have had. It's sort of like when Paramount had that great fire, we lost all of those amazing films we'll never see again. You'll never see Wings Foley. It's just like that. What? Did you burn it? Did you burn it? You pulled out the tape <laughs> and you were like, I'm setting fire to this. <laughs> Imagine the Southern more fire. <laughs> You, you get on Drag Race, we're never going to see this tape from what you're saying. It's never going to see the light of day, but we will just know that it goes down in history as making so many people laugh, but none of, none of the people at home, but just the behind the scenes. Tens of people have laughed at this video. <laughs> <laughs> Tens of people. You walk into the workroom. Did you know any of those queens when you walked in? Um, I knew of Peppermint. Because I was literally just talking about her on my show, Drag Herstory, like a few weeks before. So, like, I knew of Peppermint, and I saw her on that Gay.com series they had on YouTube. They, like, profiled her and a bunch of other queens, like Bianca, before she was on and everything. So, like, I knew of Peppermint. I had worked with Shea Coulee, like, once. We had done one show in Chicago. And other than that, like, you only know of her because she would pass through Milwaukee from time to time. So like I knew of her, I sort of like knew her as an acquaintance, but other than that, I didn't know who any of these other girls are. Oh no, that's a lot. And um, who else? I think I had seen some stuff with Charlie's cause she was really big on YouTube. And yeah, that's about it. I didn't know anyone else. <laughs> I was like, who are these people? <laughs> so you, you, from what I've told, I texted Trixie today and I asked Trixie, I said, is there anything that you want me to know or ask James? And Trixie said, no. But did you know that she makes- Who are you, how'd you get number? <laughs> Stop. Yeah. You went on True People Search to get her number, didn't you? That's where everybody goes. <laughs> I did. I went truepeoplesearch.com. Uh, Brian, whatever your last name is. <laughs> <laughs> he he said to me, he said, no, I don't have a question for her. But little known fact, did you know that James Manfield makes all puppets, all costumes, and all wigs? And I'm like, no, Trixie, I've never seen her YouTube channel before. I don't know that at all. Ah, I love that she had absolutely no question for me whatsoever. <sighs> that really speaks volumes of our friendship, honestly. I mean, we've known each other for upwards of six plus years, and she has nothing 
that springs to mind for me. That, that's, that's great. I love that. I love that. It's fine. This is fine. It's fine. This is fine. But one thing that's been talked about quite recently along Drag Race is that as these years are going on, these queens are spending more and more and more money on their outfits and their wigs and everything. When you were on, did you make everything of yours by hand? Well, I will say I was approached for that article. I didn't realize it was going to be as big of a deal as it was. Otherwise, I would have said yes. And no, but um, I actually only spent like $3,000 on my package and I made that almost is everything. Incredible. There are a few things from Amazon I had bought that I would add to it. But yeah, everything was made by me. But I didn't think it was an interesting answer, so I didn't bother doing the interview. <laughs> I should have done it. Shit, it got a lot of attention.